everybody to another great episode of Real Life Matters. Of course, I'm your host here, D-Boss. And yes, yes, I know everybody is seeing a little bit of a different setup here today because I want to make sure everybody was on properly and stuff like that. But today, we're, they're, we brought them back on another episode, the Crack of Dawn Bed. And they're going to talk a little bit about their Paved the Way documentary. They're going to get a little bit in depth. Yes, there, we have one other person that's going to be on the screen today, and that's good. you're going to see, introduce him. But we want to get into really what happened to these guys today. So welcome, 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 Crack of Dawn. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Boy, so we don't know. The only one we didn't have on the screen was... Carl, I don't know. Carl, Carl just put his first name. I guess he wants to be a little bit um discreet. So uh, Carl, not really. <laughs> I'm Rupert's brother, so we have the same last name. Oh, you're Rupert's brother. I thought you guys looked a little familiar, but I'm saying oh. <laughs> So, what part are you from? I know if you're Rupert's brother, you're coming from Jamaica, but what part? Same part as him. <laughs> People, I think this is they're going to be troublesome today. <laughs> All right. Okay. And um, what part do you play in the band? Well, guitarist, producer, co writer. That's Engineer. it. In this, in, 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 in this iteration of the band, right? In the first iteration of the band, I played bass on some of the records as well. Okay. Some of them. All right. Well, well welcome. And Rupert, you just tell everybody what you play, where you're from. Well, I'm like the last time from Jamaica. We're, uh, we were born in, um, in the parish of Clarendon, and I grew up in St. Catharines. And I play. I play um, rhythm guitar, and I'm also a writer, and uh, I also do a lot of background vocals. All right, Alvin Jones. Um, I was born in Jamaica. I uh, came to Canada at a very young age. Uh, I lost my accent. I came to Canada when I was six, and I play sax and flute in the band, and uh, sometimes uh, keyboards now and then, especially in the uh, the early part of the band, and I, I, you know, I write songs now and then as well. And you sing too? Uh, I would. I wish I could sing, <laughs> 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 but I. I so, I do what Rupert, do you, you sing or Carl? Do you guys sing or no? Yeah, yeah. somewhat. Yeah. Okay. okay. Rupert yeah. more too than I do. Uh, most of me in this uh, configuration. Okay, and Mr. Trevor Daly. Yes, ma'am. Can you tell us where you come from? I, what you I'm, do? What's your partner? I, I'm from Kingston, Jamaica. Um, came to Canada with a group called the Virtuous Years in '69 or six, yeah, '69, and then Rupert and I started Crack of Dawn, and um, I'm the trombone player, and some some background vocals some okay all right so you guys wanted to put a, do a documentary about you guys paving the way people if you didn't watch the first episode i suggest that you go back and watch it but we will touch on some of those um, issues you guys were actually harassed shot beat had to clear places to get out of wherever you guys were. And it mostly happened in Ontario. Yes, people, wake up. This stuff happened in Ontario. They were, there's white supremacist people, KKK, whatever you want to call them, but Western just Guard. because <laughs> they wanted to play music. So tell us about your experience. Who wants to take uh, maybe Carl, Carl can say, well, how did you feel when this was happening? At the time, really, I think I was more pissed off than anything else, you know, because we just wanted to do what we're doing, right? I really wasn't 
that scared because I really didn't think that these guys who were doing that stuff at the time had the means to fulfill on their threats. You know, I just really saw them as a bunch of really weak people who were hiding behind this facade of superiority, right? They, they called in their bomb threats anonymously, you know, and all that stuff. They never really confronted us except for one occasion where they vastly outnumbered us. And we didn't even know that this was going to be happening. And by the time the, the, uh, the show had wrapped up at City TV and other people saw what was happening and came down there to confront them, they were gone. You know, so these are not... These were not so tough guys. You guys were down at City TV. This is where it happened. And it was all rolling. Police, everything came after. And these guys just disappeared. Yeah. They just they were allowed to walk away. There were not a, there were no arrests made. They didn't arrest them? Nothing. No, no arrests were made. No. You sure they weren't the police? <laughs> 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 we won't say. Well, we won't, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. They didn't look like that. No, but, not, but, but you know, come on. You would think that somebody would have got arrested or something because I. I you you know. think? Well, okay. Well, you, you know, know what? what? The thing is, fairly. Oh no, just to be on a fair side, right? There were like maybe there was maybe like one cop. He was like a paid security guard, more so than he was. That's not that's not the police. No, he was he was he was a police. Like they had a police officer there. And you, you know, police officers sometimes get they get jobs doing security in uniform, so they can make an arrest. But when there's one guy, and there's like thirty other guys, you can't make an arrest in that kind of situation. <laughs> you really can. By the time the other cops came, you know, those guys were walking away. They're already outside on the sidewalk and that kind of stuff. So. So what are you going to say, Alvin? Um, well, uh, I, I would say it's probably similar to what's going on in Canada right now. You know, these guys in Ottawa, they're camping out and doing all kinds of breaking the law. You know, they they enacted the uh, what is it? The uh, the emergency uh, act, you know, for all of Canada, it's almost like the War Measures Act. And these guys are setting up, uh, 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 you know, what do you call it? Hot tubs and. Everything Most they're big. doing is illegal, <laughs> but nobody's doing anything about it. And and I guess the reason is because they're white. Let's let's just be honest, man. Oh. And if, if that was a, that was a, if it was if it was people of color or anybody else, that indigenous. would not be occurring. Yeah, yeah or indigenous, indigenous people. Anybody. You know, none of them are getting any tickets. Nothing is going on, and it's costing them millions and multiple millions of dollars a day. While these guys, you know. Uh, while well, they're embarrassed in Canada, worldwide, they're thinking of the government is, you know, they're not doing anything about this. And and in reality, you know, so so that's the sort of that's the sort of mentality that they did in terms of this because these guys did a, a fair amount of harm. They kicked uh, uh, one of the band members' wives who was pregnant in the stomach. She lost the other miscarriage, and and nothing happened to these people. Nothing. Absolutely. No charges. We never heard about any charges or anything. Well, someone said charges? these were all the protests. They wanted me to come down there. I, they said, they go to you, boss, and let her come down there and interview. That's I'm not going down there for that protest with the truckers. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not yeah, talk yeah. about that, please. Let's just talk about <laughs> yeah. the music. Yes. <laughs> no, yes. Again, yeah. Oh, gosh, I know. But um, you, so, so somebody's wife, who was one that got kicked in the stomach? Dwight, trumpet player. The trumpet player. Okay. And if if well, I if I can say it? so, actually, Dwight used a microphone stand and hit one of the guys over the head. <laughs> and Dwight <laughs> got charged. He got charged. Wow. Yes, he, he did. He got charged. Dwight. Wow. For hitting one really? of the guys, the child Dwight with assault. It got thrown out, but he had to go to court over it. Yeah, but none of them got charged, but one of us got charged. I, I, right, I, one of us got charged. There's so many conflicting stories, because what I understood was that Dwight was going to press charges about from the, the kick. And, and yes, so basically, what happened was that they made a deal 
whereby they say, we'll drop your charge if you drop the charge against the guy who kicked your wife. Right. Well, that's some criminal. So ask. maybe, maybe, maybe uh, the boss is right. Maybe they were, were police. Mm. <laughs> that's what makes it go. Hmm. But you know, so Alvin, what happened to you? Did someone jump you? Did you fight uh, back, no. or what did you do? Well, to be honest, my my version is very similar to what Carl said. I never really got caught up in the uh, in the in the things that were occurring at the time and uh, all i all i recall is that there was a a guy i guess he was the so-called leader of the uh, of the group and i just remember him staring at me while, while we were there setting up getting ready to play and um i i i, I thought this guy might have been the you know like the uh, stage manager or the floor manager or whatever you call these guys and uh he's just watching us as we but as as he kept watching us and you know i was just Put, you know getting ready to start playing and getting all that kind of stuff and and uh i'm just what is this guy he doesn't say anything he's just staring at me and i, I said okay i'm staring at him I'm, I'm waiting for him to say something and he doesn't say anything and then and then he starts <laughs> approaching and then i know the guy's getting more and more pissed off and i remember you know froth coming out white froth coming out the side of his mouth <laughs> getting pissed off you know what i mean and then i just started laughing is this guy crazy <laughs> you know, i didn't get it you know, and then all of a sudden the guy starts uh, uh, yelling at the audience, "What do we want?" And, and the white power, white power. <laughs> when do I, we want it? Guys, I really, wow. thought, I really thought it was a joke. I said, like I really did. I was laughing because I said, "These guys are they crazy? They're, they're crazy. They're, they're stupid. We're in the TV studio." And I, I, I started laughing. The more I laughed, the more pissed off the guy got. You know what I mean? You know what can I tell you? But no, I never. Uh, what about, no well, what about uh, Rupert? What, what, what part did you did you do any anybody? Did you beat anybody or something or no? <laughs> no, I was a no, young kid, I like seven, I was probably seventeen years old at the time, and I, I just stayed on the stage. I was about to go off, and then a lady that was a part of the show. She she'd been there for an interview. She was a, polit a, a some kind of a politician. That was Hayes the Medallion, dude. That's right. That was Hazel oh Medallion. God, it was no, it wasn't. No, was it? Who was it? Who was it? Was it? it? Was it? it, was it was the mayor of the ex mayor of Toronto. I can't remember her name now. A but she grabbed my hand. Andrew. Yeah, her name was. Yeah, yeah she grabbed on to me. Huh? Alvin? I was talking. Guys. Was she grabbed on to me different. and told me not to get yes. involved. She held me back. I I was about oh. to go into the audience. And, and, and and throw down a little bit, but she says, "Don't get caught up in, in with these people." Energy, you know. She saved me, well, really. She must have hold, She must have held your hand pretty tight because she did. <laughs> Gee. She did. I was a little skinny guy at the time, though not like no big and strong. I was a skinny little kid. So, about Trevor, what happened to you? You know what? All I remember is standing there and saying, "What the." Is going on, and we I stood there and just walked off stage. That was it, you know. I'm waiting to see something happen, and then the ruckus around me. You didn't get a chance to really go and go after anybody, you know, because you thought that when somebody was going to take control inside the studio, but nobody, nobody did. did. So what did you guys do? You just stood where well, you got, I guess you must have been in shock just looking and saying, <laughs> oh my gosh, you know, this happened. And and everybody's just standing at the, sta the station. Must be, they must have been in shock too. Yeah. So yeah. Like, what's going on? Yeah. You don't even know if yeah. you don't even know if you're in shock or, or, or what's going on. You're just, you know, ask yourself what's <laughs> happening. Or is this part of the show? I don't know. That's what I thought. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm like, is this an act? <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> he must have thought that they were but, running up on you and you were saying, oh, this <laughs> No, they didn't really run up on us like that. They they really, you know, they, one or two people tried that, you know, but most of them, they, they just stood up and did the nod salute and they threw bananas. That they did do. They threw bananas at you? <laughs> yeah, on the page. Oh my God, that is not nice at all. You should throw it back to them. <laughs> they were trying That's to be nice. Good. Yeah, we were outnumbered like 10 to 1. Yeah, 10 to 1. <laughs> well, 
Well, yeah, the entire audience was uh, the uh, the KKK or the Western Guard Party. The Western audience. Guard. Yeah. So the camera's rolling and they're getting all these people throwing bananas on, on the stage. Okay, a, a little a little bit of, of political history here, okay? The guy yes. who was the leader of the Western Guard, right? That whole movement evolved into the um, Reform Party, which then morphed itself into the Conservative Party. The same people, Preston Manning and all these people, those were the people that were involved in that stuff back then. Wow. So now we're going to go to another stage. So Trevor got shot. Were you guys all around when that happened? I wasn't. I wasn't there. I, I, I was there after. I am to be. I am to go to a club that a, a friend of ours was playing in, and um, I went there with another another friend, keyboard player named Ike Bennett, and we went to the club to see this other man. And on the way into the club, somebody started shooting. I got hit, and my friend got hit, and um. Your, oh, your friend got hit too. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And um. It, you know, so I, I'm lying on the ground. I'm saying this can't be real, you know. And I'm lying on I'm lying on my stomach, and I realize that when I'm, this is actually a shooting, and I rolled I rolled under this car, and this guy was standing behind me shooting. And, and all I can think of, I just bought my brand new leather coat with a fur collar, <laughs> and I realized, damn, this guy's gonna ruin my coat, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Which you shot the, the guy shot the, the guy's bullet went right between my legs into my coat. Right? You're lucky that's where it went. But then two <laughs> bullets hit me. Hit me. I know. It's <laughs> not funny at the time when you're saying shoot because it kind of lost something else. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly. Well, I got shot in the stomach and in the leg, and that was it. You know, it wasn't your leg, it's something else. A little bit higher, high boy. <laughs> he be <laughs> singing piccolo. <laughs> you should have cut this before it came out. Don't worry about your leather coat with the, with the fur around it. Forget the leather coat, you got to go. You know? Oh. So, <laughs> so you recover. So, you know, I know you got shot and, and this. And then um, Rupert was telling us, and you guys were telling us that when you guys were actually going up to some of these places in Northern Ontario, hello, yes, people, this is in Ontario for people that don't open your mouth because it happened. Toronto. And you guys had to actually, they had bomb scares in some of the places that you're going to perform at. Yeah, that make you yeah. in Toronto, in Toronto, in Toronto, in the city of Toronto. <laughs> this wasn't like in North Bay. This is the city of Toronto. So, yeah, right so down, what did they do? The owner came and told you guys, oh, you can't perform here tonight because somebody called and said they're going to do a bomb scare? What, what did they do? Yeah. No, you got to call the police. You, you, well, you know what happened? They called, people were calling the club that we were going to perform in and told them that they're going to they're gonna blow up the place. What happened is that our manager, Shane Bennett, he reversed it. So he called the clubs that the white bands are playing in and threatened the club owners. <laughs> so they care for the white bands also because he's what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> are you incriminating well, you're lucky it was back then no, and no, it's not today. No, Shane said this. This. this was in, in an interview, Shane said that. You know, that he, well, I guess we got, he, 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 he reversed it. the statute of limitations. I didn't know he did that. Yeah, he, yeah. he told me that. He told me that also. He never yep. shared it with us. <laughs> no. no. No, but after a while, you guys must feel bitter. You know, you feel a little bit. Oh my gosh, I'm trying to. I'm trying to do music. I'm trying to do what I'm supposed to do, and everybody's enjoying the R and B music. And here you got these people attacking you guys everywhere you go. Yeah. Well, you know what I think. I think that really. Uh, screwed up our uh, 
you know our chances of sort of you know moving further in the industry along with of course the the things that came along from columbia records but i mean after uh, after two years um, you know we lost our deal with columbia records but we really could have gone to another label because i remember uh, bob yellow saying you know you guys could really just walk into any other um any other um uh you know record label and, and, and cut a deal but i don't think that was ever mentioned to anyone you know um i don't know um you know these these are stories that uh, i guess uh, you know it's all in hindsight so to speak but uh, i think i i think the band seriously could have approached any of the other record labels and could have got a deal because there was so much spent on the group in terms of advertising and promotion and I mean, we're on every single media you can think of. We're on doing TV shows with Patti LaBelle and and a whole bunch of other people, all the major stars across Canada, and and with people that from the U.S. that were coming up that were just breaking their mega songs. Like as I said, Patti LaBelle, she was breaking that song "Lady Marmalade" and and all kinds of people, Cool and the Gang, and so on. So I I think we certainly could have gone to another label and they would have grabbed it because. All the, all the well, foundation stuff has been done already. You know what I mean? We were but, we were approached uh, by Warner Can Warner Canada to come over right after this, but then we were so tied up with um with 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 uh Columbia and Glenn Ricketts that that was a big thing. Nobody approached it. If and Glenn, Glenn I didn't know, know, this, I for, this is the first time I'm hearing about this. Yeah, that's when I left. If Glenn, mm. if we stayed together as a package, it would have been a different uh -huh. thing. But because there was this Absolutely. internal division, that's to me that and was what the, what caused that? What made you guys just say, you know, I guess because of all this was going on, so so some people went this way and some people went that way. What what you know what happened? It's artistic differences, you know. You that's mm -hmm. you have that when you have creatives, a lot of creative people in one thing. You have people who want to have do things one way and people who may want to do it another way. You know, people who want to okay, I but want I to do my song. I yeah, think that's that happens a lot. Group. You're gonna you're gonna have artistic differences, but you know, you're not necessarily going to have the whole group disband and you know, with all that opportunity on the table. I don't. I think we we're so young, and there was no management. And then you have all these things that were were really disrupting the entire group, like the from, from the studio and bomb threats and all the, all this kind of foolishness. And it sort of certainly would have had a, an effect on the, well, I guess, you know, on doing concerts, you know, future concerts, because, you know, you know, we weren't being approached to do all that kind of stuff any longer. I'm sure if we were approached to do concerts and go on tour, you know, the band would sort of keep things together. But maybe with all the stuff that was going on in terms of the, the, the you know, the TV studio stuff and the bomb threats that people were probably staying away from us. And they weren't even playing our songs on the radio. You know, that was another thing. Wait, That's so they I mean, stopped playing your, your music there too. Yeah. Excuse me. Wow. You know, they weren't playing our songs on the radio. You have groups from from back in the day, and they didn't even go as far as we did, and they're still playing their music up to this day. But this, all the all the radio stations stopped playing our music. Boom! It's like we it's like we never existed, and then they forgot about us. You know what I'm saying? I think so, they're just trying to sweep everything under the under the table. So, what did your the non-white members of the band? What did they, they, they? How did they feel? The non-white members. There was yeah. only. They're all. We're all non-white members. <laughs> there was only one you know, white. I mean, band. <laughs> I mean the, 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 <laughs> I mean the ones that were white in the band. Just one guy. There's only one guy. Was, or only now it's, it's it, you have other other races in there, right? There was only one white guy in the band at the time. Okay. Okay. So how did yeah. you feel? You know what? We we never did ask him. <laughs> yeah, he was just part of it. <laughs> he, was just, he was just in the band. We never did confront me. Never expressed it. Like, oh my gosh, I don't want to know if I want to come. Um, Call these guys, you know? No, we're a band of brothers. We were bad musicians. Okay. We know we we never consider okay. who was white and who was black and not. Right. We yeah. were there to make music together. We did a great job with that, you know. Yeah, but I guess with we brought on a lot of barriers. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it okay. e everything, all the dangers that we were facing, he was facing too. Because he, you know, he didn't try to say, okay, well, those guys, I don't know those guys, you know. It's like if 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 a, a bomb is not going to discriminate if if there really is one, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna say, oh, just, you know what? You're not going to get blown up, just them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he would have been collateral damage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like we never really we never really considered uh, all the stuff that you think of today and the colors. Was it, we all we cared about whether the guy was good or not and. And he sort of fit in with the rest of the guys in the group. We got along well together, that type of thing. That's all we care about. Yeah. We we weren't the racists. Okay. We, yeah. We were not the racists. We love everyone. No. Okay. So, so we were, you we were guys... only concerned about their musical ability. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if they can play, they can do this, and they can sing, exactly. and they can do what you guys. So, what made you guys yeah. say, you know what? I gotta take us. We gotta take a stand. And we are going to overcome this obstacle, even though, you know, your, your music's being removed from the, you know, the radio platforms and stuff. So what did you guys do say? Because there's a song that you guys, and you guys came back and you did. Well, I, I, I to be honest with you, I, I think we were way too young. I mean, Rupert's 17 years old, the teenagers, we were way too young to think, uh, you know, objectively like that and, and, and figure everything out. And, you know, we, we needed support from management or people that, you know, to help us to, uh, you know, work through this situation. We never had that. We never had any sort of direction. And I think if we would have had someone step in and, and give us a little bit more direction, things would have worked out a lot differently in terms of the group itself. Because I mean, to be, to be very honest with you at that, at that time, you know, you know, that's when the group like Rush was around and, and, and they're mm -hmm. mega stars today in Canada. Uh, you've got even Whoa. the guy that we used, we used to travel with. Uh, I mean, well, we, when we were when we were touring, they used to tour after us. With, uh, what was that group called again? Um, uh, the, he, the, he went out on his own after that. Um, um, I don't know if you guys remember them, but they, they used to yes, work so through the, uh, the, 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 what is it, sorry? Was it the Guess Who's? Um, Trevor, not the, the, not the, the Guess Who. Is, no. is, is it the Guess Who's? Guess Who? No, no. Guess Who or whatever. No, it's not the Guess Who. Uh, oh, but okay. the guy that um, we used to go through music shop. Remember the other guys that we used to play with that, that were coming out of the music shop booking agency? Mm -hmm. um, Max platinum Webster. Blonde. Remember Max Webster? Huh? Those guys were platinum blonde at the music shop. Yeah, yeah. and Max Webster. Max Webster is the one I was talking about. Oh, and the guitar Mitchell. player from Max Webster, Kim Mitchell, Kim Mitchell. Mitchell, yeah, Kim Mitchell, Kim Mitchell. Yeah, Kim Mitchell. Yeah, Kim Mitchell. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I mean, they came, they came from the same era, you know, and um, they, you know, managed to keep it together. But then again, they weren't getting bomb threats like we were, and and <laughs> they still kept playing their music on the air and all that kind of stuff. But as soon as Crack of Dawn sort of, you know, you know, uh, went in different directions, they, I never heard the songs being played on the radio after that. Nothing, gone. Well, so they, they, um, you know, we were, we were, we were, you know, they talk about cancel culture. We were definitely <laughs> deleted. You know what I mean? Could, could I add a little to that um, about playing on the air? This is a little bit. It's not Crackadon. This is Messenger, which is my mm -hmm. thing that I I ended up doing after Crackadon. So okay. we found out that the cops used to go to the radio stations and petition them not to play our music because they thought it was going to have a, a negative effect on the white youth. So they, they literally would go into CN, FY, and all these kind of places and ask them not to play her stuff. We were told that by insiders. Wow. Wow. So yeah. did you guys, after that little period of time and they were, they were playing your music on the, on the radio, on the platform, did you guys still continue to do music or did you guys just take a break? No breaks. <laughs> no breaks. You keep going well, no matter what. I mean, Carl went, went, went out and started playing with a, a major reggae band, Tips in the Middle. Maybe Carl can explain that part of it. Yeah, which, which, really which reggae band, Carl? Come on. Toots and the Maytals. Okay. The inventors of know. reggae. 
Oh yes. <laughs> yes. So that's the biggest one of the conscious biggest. Conscious reggae. Huh? Conscious reggae. Of course. Yeah, just that conscious. was reggae. That's the guy that that coined the word reggae. <laughs> did you see okay. the movie The Hard If They Come? I think I did. I can't remember. Okay. Well, The Hard If They Were Come. Were you in there? No. But Toots was in The, in the Hard If They Come. The Hard If They Come okay. is, the, is the movie that basically took reggae to the world, right? That's true. Even before okay. Bob. Right? Yeah. And in the heart of they come, the primary people were Jimmy Cliff, who is still alive and kicking, right? Toots and the Maytals, right? And uh, then they had, who else? They had other artists in the movie, but the, the two primary people that came from that movie were Toots and Jimmy Cliff, okay. who, who rose, you know, to the top of the industry. And then after that, Bob came in. Okay. So you were there. I was not there. I, jo I joined the band in 1980. Okay. Just the Maytals were together in the 60s. Oh, yeah. They were down in the 60s, but you joined in that in that time, in, in yeah. the 80s time. I joined after I left Crackadon. Yeah. Okay. So, so you left Crackadon. You went to the band. Seven, okay. And then, you, and then you came back to Crackadon. Yeah, so I, have, I have multiple projects. I, even right now, I have multiple projects going on. Okay. I, I'm still, I still work with Crackadon. I still have the remnants of the Maytals because Toots passed away due to COVID in, in 2020. Yes, yes, sorry. Right? And um, so the rest of the band is still together as Obessa because we had some legal confrontations with this estate over the, over the use of the name Maytals. Okay. And uh, you know, I've got solar projects and, and other things that I'm doing too. So, like, I'm active as a, as okay. a producer and a player. So, car works works with myself. Yeah, with my my brother and my nephew. Yeah. <laughs> so. so you so Rupert, you still do the reggae too, right? Well, you've always been in yep. the reggae. Mm -hmm. Okay. I do All everything. Right. So you Yes, and, and so okay. So you guys are you were doing other projects um, while Crack of Dawn was going through this transition. Yeah, yeah, we all went in different directions, and then we kind of came back together. Came the thing that really brought us back together was that um, the show we did at the Ship's Deck. Really, I think you know Alvin was the person who he was the catalyst for that, and he, he brought us back together to do this show. I mean, we did it once before with Glenn at uh, the Blue Note, but it didn't last beyond that, right? And then uh, we did the ship's deck. Carlos Morgan was doing lead singing at the time. Oh, and I know. Then, Car is that the same Carlos Morgan that lives out here? The yes. Same mm -hmm. Yes, I know. Him. Yeah. I interviewed him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he did that one show with us, and then after that, um, we... Michael Dunstan. Michael Dunstan. Yep. Yeah, was it right from Carlos to, to Michael? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Wow. So Carlos was in with you guys, Morgan, and um, Trevor. So Trevor, what did you do during the time? I know you got shot. You probably had to recover from all that. Well, I, I, after I got shot, I did, after I got out of the hospital, I went back with the band, yeah. and we were and we were touring all over, even bigger than before. Yeah. And, okay. and I, I'll tell you a little bit of the story. We're we'll talking about other band. How I left the band. We were doing a show at Place des Arts in Montreal. Okay, Montreal. Mm -hmm. And this show, we were opening for this girl named Tina Charles. She was a big disco diva at the time. Diva at the time, mm -hmm. and. We were, we were, the band was so amazing, yet the record company came to tr to Canada, to Montreal to see the show, and they came down to, because they came to see her, right, because they, they were her stars. When they saw Crack of Dawn, and Crack of, and the audience response to Crack of Dawn, I was standing backstage, and I heard the record company rep from New York say to the record company person here, 
that um you know what this band is too close to earth and fire let's get rid of the horns mm. and i heard them say that and i remember going backstage at the end of the show and said guys guys the record company is gonna do something about us they're gonna just uh, break up the band and are we gonna stick it out and i and everybody agreed yes yeah we're gonna stick it out and you know so when i got back to toronto from montreal and glenn ricketts came into the dressing room we're playing i remember playing york university and glenn ricketts <laughs> came and said or oh, the record company would like to do this, whatever it was, get rid of the horns, you know? And everybody, everybody stayed silent. And I said, oh, are we going to do what the record company says? Or are we going to... And nobody answered. I said, you know what, guys? I'm done. I, and I walked away from it that night. I was done with you and the whole thing, you know? And the band continued after that, and they didn't last for another... But maybe a month before everybody started dispersing. Well, and the record company the finds the weak, the record company finds the weak link and whispers in their ears and make the mark and you know what, making a deal with the devil. That's what happened. Pull it aside, make a deal with the devil, and and, and destroy us because really and truly they didn't want to see this group of young black, dominant black guys become super successful which we were on that path we were paying the biggest venues in the in, in the country some of the nicest venues and having huge audiences it was time to stop it mm. in my so opinion when, yeah. Well, yeah. When actually, did you I, guys I say we're, we were actually we we're actually going into areas in canadian society where probably no other black people have ever been like remember that's that time true. we played at the granite club which is an exclusive <laughs> <laughs> the granite. Yeah, that's true. I remember. Where is that? Yeah, watch from. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's the next. It's right. Only it's black right servants the were allowed there. Area. And I guess they, they were getting scared of their their uh, silverware disappearing, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's an exclusive, uh, you know, bastion of whiteness. You know, the granite club. So you know, we we were playing there. Uh, we played Not just there whiteness, for, uh, my friend. Not just no white, Jews. Huh? Not just they white. They Jewish. Wasp yeah. this. Yeah. Wasp they didn't want any Jewish people there either. Us and the yeah. Jews were yeah. classed together back, back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> so here, here we are playing at the Granite Club. So we like there was there was no sacred ground that we weren't <laughs> you know going on. You know what I mean? And and so uh, you guys really paved paved the way. So when did you realize in your mind you said? know something we really didn't pave the way for all these different artists to, to come out mm -hmm. black artists to come out indigenous artists to come out so when did you guys think that in your mind we, we didn't think it i don't think i didn't think it anyway all we wanted to do was keep on playing and we don't do what we love and building it you know we didn't think about all the other aspects of it so when you went, said you want to put together a documentary that you paved the way, so something had to strike you, strike to you, say, you know something, we really did do a lot. You usually notice that years down the road. You don't, you don't yeah. realize that at the moment. Right. It, it's right. retrospect. You look back and you say, oh my God, we are the guys that actually opened up this whole thing, you know. And but at the time when you're doing it, you know, you're like we said, we're young kids. We're, you know, the oldest guy was in his twenties. So we didn't right. think about that. We just wanted to play music, have a good time, dance, you know, hang, you know, you, you know, that's what we're doing. Now, many years down the road, you look back at what we did, and then that's when you say, Oh, we really had a legacy here that we created. Yeah. And then you guys came back and you wrote some more songs, right? Later on. Yeah. But but for some reason they're still not playing our song on, on uh, commercial radio across Canada. In fact, we, we get more airplay in the UK than we do in our own country, Canada. They, yeah, they Europe. Play our music. Yeah. The new song they that you have out now, that old school, it was of all it was from 2019 and a few of these other songs. And and they don't play it. They don't play it on Canadian radio. They don't wow. play it. It's like, it's I, like, like I really I said, like I it because I'm into old school. I like it. I don't know what, I don't yeah. know what the story is, but... It, 
it, uh, it, it's, I, and I told this to Trevor before I said, what happened? Did we, uh, did we really piss off everybody in the music industry? We, I don't you know, think so, I, you know, Aldrin. I don't think so. I think, I think huh? it's a matter of, we're not dropping the payola. If we were dropping the payola, they'd pay it. They would play it. It's, I think that, that, that commercial radio play is dominated by payola, whether people want to admit it or not. Yeah, but, but, it's, but, in some form or the other. It's not necessarily a guy giving a guy cash under the table in a restaurant, but sometimes it's, it's, there's other ways. There's other back scratching that's going on with the majors, why their artists get played and why independent artists are not get played. Well, Carl, here, here, I, don't, it, I, I agree with my brother, but I, I, there's something to, more than that to it. There is the color thing to it. Um, but they're playing. They're playing a lot of the black artists. Why are they not playing us? Yeah, I know those guys are controlled by by certain companies and stuff. What right. I, I was which, saying, which comes down to the grease. Yeah, but the grease. Trevor, do you remember when Messenger played um this big festival at the the, the in Elora? Right. Uh -huh. They used our name to promote the show. Like we were a major draw. The, the promoters even told us that that we were like a major draw. The, most of the phone, a lot of the phone calls he got was messengers coming. We played an incredible show. They loved us. The very next year, the guy wanted to put us into a smaller little venue off this main concert scene to just play like little parties. Yeah, so that was common for us, like to to to, to do big shows, have amazing response, great media, and then they take us from that level and say, "Oh no, you guys, you you guys come in the back door of the kitchen." That, that was common for us. I like came in. Yeah, and and, that, and, that, you know, and to be honest, here after hearing Rupert's story, that, and I followed uh, Messenger as well, and and you know used to go to all their concerts and and love their music. What I don't understand is why their music is not being played on commercial radio. They were with a major record company, Warner. Their their music is fantastic. People know them. I don't know why their music is not being played on the radio either. That's yeah. the, that's so those are the well, real heavy riders. You know, wasn't it back then though? I think wasn't it being huh? played back then? I mean, yes, yeah, we, 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 are started. we are jam session being played. Yeah, man. Yeah. They, yeah, were, you know, a lot of they were playing jam session on, in a major way. Yeah. You yeah. know, but yeah. so why did they stop playing it? I mean, they're playing everyone else's stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, because, I don't hear them playing any message of music anymore. But it's 20 years old now, Alvin. You know, and if the but thing is, this music from forty years ago. Yeah, that's true. Well, what what made you guys like some of you guys were so tight lipped and you didn't tell people about what you guys went through. You guys, hmm. you know, you didn't tell people. Some of you, some people didn't know what you guys went through until you know I asked y'all, and people were like, he, some people said they never even knew that you went through all this. I have so much. People like, oh my gosh, what happened to Crocker Dodge? People should have knew about that. But I guess you guys didn't have nobody was to back you. Nobody was supporting you back then. You couldn't, you didn't have a voice to tell people and air it out. But back we, then, when those things happened, excuse me, when those things happened at the time, it was news. It was, it, huh. it was, it was news. So I think that the people who don't know are just the people who were not really around at that time. They come afterwards okay. and they see a certain things, but the people who were around at that time, they know. Mm. You know? But it wasn't it, it wasn't like say something that was uh carried forward as a part of the history. Right. But if you look I do remember one thing. At the time when we were signed, they made a big deal about us being the first black band being signed to a major company. And it's still okay. it's still it's registered as that in the history books. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If you check out the, Can sure uh, the, the Canadian Encyclopedia of Pop Music, and they have a lot about us inside there. Yeah. The Canadian Encyclopedia of Pop Music. Both okay. Crackadon and Messenger is in I there. I think it's music, yeah. Is it is pop music okay. or just music? Yeah. Is it pop? I, I can't remember. I think it's pop. It's, it's pop. I think I it's think. music. Is it? I think it's music, yeah. 
Okay. You can a quick look. Well, people, you got to look that <laughs> up over there. I mean, so when, I, I like when do you think that, that there, you there there's a lot of problems in the Canadian music industry, and that's why they have uh, are starting to sort of they recognize that they they all know it, and they're they're trying to make changes. I mean, and there's there's uh, agencies now like Advance, which is a which is an agency, and it's actually supported by the government, and it's it's almost like an employment agency for people of color, or you know what I mean, to uh, to get them in, more involved in the music industry. Uh, so, you know, they, so they have, you know, they create, you know, they, they, they basically are aware of all the, the positions that come, become available working for record companies at all the different levels and so on. And uh, people can access that. It's called an advance. So they're, they're, they're trying to make, you know, try to try to do, do something about the injustices mm -hmm. in the industry that's been, you know, pervasive for the last 40 years. Uh, so, you know, these so are some new initiatives that they're trying to do. And then uh, I so know that also those, uh, was it? <laughs> uh, go ahead. No. So when did you those guys decide, you know what, we're going to come back. We're going to put old school, your song, old school, tempo, you know, and you guys, and then you have a, the lead singer there from, um, he's from the U.S., right? So mm -hmm. when did you guys just say, you know what, we're getting up and we, we're getting up and now uh, we're going to do our stuff. Alvin, well, I, I think, I think, I think what happened is uh, in 2012, uh, you know, you know, I guess it was Trevor and Glenn Ricketts at the time before he was uh, escorted fully <laughs> to the airport and never to be heard of or from again, and he was he went back to Jamaica, you know, uh, and oh, okay. but you know, I remember you know meeting with, with with Trevor and Glenn, and they said, well, let's get the band together and blah 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 and so on and so forth. So then, um, you know, we, you know, we, we started to, you know, make inroads into making that happen. Our first big engagement was actually July first, Canada Day, at Harborfront. We played at the on the West Jet stage, and then we decided, you know what, guys, like, like, like this time, let's try and keep the band together because there's so many talented people in the group. It seems like everybody in the group is a songwriter and a record producer. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're all well, we seen we seen Rupert dancing in the in the in the um in the video. Was it Rupert? And I think I don't know if oh, yeah. it was Carl. Carl, were you in that one? The old school? No, all of us. Oh no, yeah, you weren't in that one. I, I was. I, I was. Carl might have been on tour with Tuts. Yeah, might have been on tour with Tuts at the time. But anyway, uh, so getting oh. back to that, so we decided, you know, let's let's get together, let's you know do our own thing. So we, you know, we started our own record company and started promoting ourselves and doing all that ourselves. Started promoting our own our own engagements. You know, we started doing gigs at the Phoenix and the major concerts, all in and around the the area and, and so on. And and we decided we're just going to start making our own music, doing it on our own terms, and and, and see what happens. But there's so much push well it's happening of, uh, it's happening I, everybody likes that music i'm telling you they're going crazy yeah but there's so much pushback from the from the industry in terms of getting our music on the air on, on commercial radio and, and the music is fantastic and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of things about the group and the people in the group i mean you got to look as i said you got you got rupert from messenger you got carl from toots of the Maple. There's so much value in the whole thing of the all these guys playing together, but I don't understand why they're not playing it and why they're not pushing it. It's going to make the Canadian music industry look even better in the eyes of the Canadian world population because we've got all these great people together in one group, but they're not doing anything, you know. And it's so hard to get in there and and you listen to some of the stuff on the air, which I think in some cases is not as as good as it could be. You know what I mean? And I don't understand why they are not, you know, getting behind these people and, and Crack of Dawn and, of course, the people and, and, and members in the group and even Messenger and all these other things that they're trying to do. Because I think in the long run, if they did, uh, the, the groups will make more money and they, they pay more taxes and it benefits the entire uh, community, you know. And that's uh, and I think those guys look at it that way. That's the problem with these people. So I think there's... there's well, I'm glad that you guys are on, making a stand. But it's slow to stand. Change. Alvin. Yeah, but I'm glad that you guys are making a stand now and you're going to come up with the movie. I know it may take a little time for the movie to get going, but you guys need to put this story out there. Out there. I think it's Netflix. 
I'll tell you a story that you guys probably don't know. I produced a song called Hands Up back in the day. How, how long have you been in Toronto? <laughs> Deep for a while. For a while. Well, you I remember, came here in the 80s from Montreal. In the 80s ladies. from Montreal? Okay. Do you remember a song called Hands Up, Baby, Hands Up, Give Me Your Heart? Don't you know that song? Okay. Well, that song was a hit record. It was a hit record. It's an international okay. hit record. And it was nominated as Song of the Year for the Junos. Right? Okay. And it was put up by Virgin Records at the time. Okay. And Club Med. That was the Club, theme for Club Med. Club Med, it was your theme. Yeah. They, they. Oh, okay. Okay. I think I know the song now. Yeah, for Club Med. Yeah. Okay. The president of the record so, company, he passed away. So I don't want to call his name right now. Right. Mm -hmm. But he called me to his office and he sat me down one day and he said, look, this song has the potential to become a huge international hit and you could find mm -hmm. yourself with a lot of money. Right. And if that happens, I don't want you to go out and buy a fancy car or something like that because there are a lot of jealous people in this industry yes right so actually i the money that i got from it i put it in the studio and i bought equipment so i wasn't thinking about getting that but the fact that he would have sat me down to hmm. tell me this right wow. and he was he wasn't telling it to me like in a malicious way he was trying to basically warn me, right? Uh -huh. Is that, hey, you know, you're starting to rise and people are starting to notice you now. So watch your back. Don't right. be conspicuous. Yeah, kill it this before it grows. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? You guys that was the end. That was... The end. I never got another production job from any of the major guys after that. And I got a gold record and a junior from it. Hey, Carl. Wow. Um, when Messenger won the Casby Awards, mm -hmm. as yes. I was walking up to the stage to receive the award, I passed by this table of some other rock musician type guys lying here, you know, yeah, boom, boom, yeah. boom. Only to hear one of them say, hey, man, we better get out the weed eater. <laughs> we call it my dreads, right? Yeah. <laughs> Where's that weed eater again? <laughs> you know, I'm like, I could have turned around and sock this freaking guy right in the, in the face. But I had some class, so I just pretended I didn't hear it, kept on walking. But that hurt. Here's my big moment. We were winning, to me, an award at that time even meant more than the Juno because the Casby's is Canadian already selected by you. It was by popularity across the entire country. People wrote into the different um, newspapers and and we were nominated and we won in our category. But that was the greeting I got on my way to ex uh, my happiest moment of my life to go accept this award. Bring out the weed eater. Wow. Yeah, but that's not, that, but, you know, they shouldn't they should have said that like that. That's not right. You know, that's just being <laughs> all, all together. Oh, you know? no, no shit. shit. <laughs> no yeah, shit. Don't. But anyway, but anyways, you know, you guys have set the pace. And I thank you guys for also coming back and, and you know, and, and emphasizing because everybody said, 30, they just kind of skipped over the whole thing. And they were talking. I said, yeah, because... But you know, we wanted to get more. What happened to you guys? Because everybody was so shocked. So shocked. Uh, I'm yeah. still I guess, shocked. I guess, Mark, now you the ball's in your court to make sure that uh, we get a lot of support from our own communities. Because I don't think yes, we've been getting a... any feeling the love from our own community. Even, you know. Top boy, that's so, awesome. <laughs> you know, so uh, I, I think that's what we really need to, to get going. Exactly. Well, people and, will uh, support yeah, you. Really a lot of people. Their own as well. well, one, one of the things I want to say is that I should tell you about the people that are with us now in the band. This, who's in the band? I can't remember. Michael <laughs> 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 Who's in the band now? <laughs> having a seat. 
Uh, Trevor has I'm a problem with you. foot and mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, well, you guys actually paved the way and we, you know, we can't wait to see the documentary on this. And I hope all you guys and everybody actually plays some part. Maybe I know for the younger guys you're going to have to get somebody to play you or your kid or somebody to play you as a younger version. But um, you know, and and see you guys how you developed in the in the older or the mature version. So you want to see all the footage. That. Huh? It's all we're uh, we just the, the stuff that's in the in the documentary is literally us in our youth and the all footage that they got from CBC from other concerts and stuff. So it's actually us. So there's no actors in it. We are the oh, the real life. Yeah, real life, real life actors. We right. we are the real life actors. Yeah, it's not okay. actors. It's, it's which is actor. good. Which is good. Which is good. You know. But I know, I didn't know if you, you know, if you never know, maybe one of these guys come pick you up because they got a lot of good um, filmmakers here that came, that, you know, that are here in Toronto that came from LA and stuff, and they're very good. And you never know. So, yeah, you never know. I know so you'd be like, do a movie. You're like, do a movie about movie? it. I'm talking saying. about a movie. That's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, you're talking about, that's a great idea. That's a great idea, actually. A movie, yeah. Not the yeah. documentary. The documentary is okay, but do a movie. That's that'd be amazing. Include all I'd like to do the scene where Trevor got. We could we could yes. do a good scene where Trevor got shot at the generator. That'd be a wicked scene. Yeah, and the scene <laughs> rolling underneath the, the car. I'll I'll play Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he could tell about he, he was oh, yeah. caring about his all he cared about is his leather coat. So, <laughs> so <laughs> you know, hey, excuse me. Oh, um, too much. I, can't, I love Trevor. I love all of you. It's just like, <laughs> um, excuse me. But, but you wanted to bring it up to the modern time, so let's not forget a few things. Yeah. Since we've done the the, the, okay. the um the yeah. new the new album that was released a couple of years ago, it's actually won a couple of international awards. We've actually worked with um you, you heard the song tiempo right yes and so so you see we're working with other artists also and um well, but more. you know we've got we've had a lot of traction in europe and and you know, south america and all over the world so i'm not gonna just so say that it's all hard so people are reaching out to you guys now and you know you, like wow now you're getting this the attraction that you should have gotten decades ago. Yeah, yeah, a little bit more. Them, but we need you to go. Yeah, we need you to go on our sites and 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 stream our music. Look for us on the Apple Music and Spotify and all these things and start and start playing our music. Start streaming our music online. Yeah. You know, go on yeah, our uh, online on YouTube. store and, and buy our buy our merchandise. You know, track Spotlight. us on online. Get on there and do that stuff and. Hey, we need our community to start start standing behind us. Yeah, uh, you got the merchandise on Crack of Dawn dot online. People, there, it's right down there. You can go buy some merchandise and stuff. We got some stuff. I don't see them wearing it over here today, but it's all right. (laughs) Is it it Crack crack of Dawn band or just Crack of Dawn dot com? Uh, Crack of Dawn Dawn. dot dot online. Yeah, I have it. It's It's at the bottom of the screen here. So everybody, yeah, well, well, anyway, I'm telling and, you, and start, you know, and start uh, and start supporting the group on Spotify and all the digital service providers out there. Start, you know, liking us, uh, and listening uh, to our music, the music, fantastic, fantastic. And, and yeah, we did that thing with Melba Moore. And, uh, I think it was amazing because she, she's a legend. Yes, I saw. It's so good, people. The video's good. That you know, the lead art, the lead singer. You know, and the dancing and that old school, I, I can dance like that. I'm telling you, I, I, I put it on, I was doing a little bit of exercise to it. So <laughs> there you go, man. I really like it. I really like it. So I but, know, I, I but, do, I, but we definitely need a lot more support from our community. And, that, and I don't think we've been getting that over the years. Yes. Well, you know, the community, the people in the Caribbean who's seeing this, please go support, buy the music. It's good. It's clean. It's nothing. Nobody's saying any kind of bad words or degrading people. It's fun. Right. You don't have to hide your kid when you cover their ears. <laughs> <laughs> 
and the kids will still go back and try to find it. So, you know, <laughs> so anyways, I do, I do want to thank you, Trevor, you know, Alvin, Rupert, Carl, I thank you for coming on. I know you didn't come on the first time, but everybody got really explained. And I want to see when you guys do a movie, because I'll be, I'll be willing to watch that one. You could, maybe, maybe you could play a character. Years. You could play a part. Yeah. yeah. You could be in the oh, movie yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'll play a part in the movie. <laughs> somebody, somebody, awesome. somebody's girlfriend, or maybe on the um, the TV, the TV um, episode when the people came in. You can update it that the cops actually came. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways. I do want to thank you guys. You guys gotta come back. You gotta come back. You know, we gotta yes, yes, everybody wants to hear. We know you you do great music. People support them out there. You know, you know, we need our people to support them out there. Exactly. And we're gonna get you guys out there. You know, and a lot of people, yeah, we play the music and stuff like that. Yes, but we need to know the people behind it. What happened to you guys that you got there? How did you get there? What new struggles you went through? This does what this is a big struggle you guys went through for this. So I'm so proud of you guys. You know, is there any Thank shout out you. you want to say just before you cut out? Well, I I like to shout out all the other members that are not on this. I mean, right here is most of the core of the original guys, but there's other okay. people out there and ex members even. So I I'd shout out Carl Otway, who is one of the founding early guys. He's you know, uh, I like to shout out Bella, or um, keyboard player from Hungary. So we got our white guy. <laughs> uh, I like to show that, of course, Michael Dunstan, and um, anyone else, guys? It's a big band. <laughs> yeah, so Charles Sinclair. Uh, Charles Sinclair. Uh, Mark, Mark Daniels. Some of the former members. Mark, Mark Smith. Yeah, Mark Daniels. Mark Smith. And, uh, Shane Bennett. Um, uh, Dennis. 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 Who? Dennis. 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 Dennis Nevis. Nevis. Nieves. Andre Nieves. King, uh, and, and one of the former Andre guys, Andre King. King. Never, he's yeah. ha hardly ever mentioned. Absolutely. Yeah, that's true. You know, Glenn Ricketts, and Mark Smith, Glenn Ricketts, Glenn Ricketts. yeah, and Jackie Ricketts. Gabriel from the Jackie beginning. Gabriel, that's true. Jackie yeah. Gabriel. Yeah. Tyrone, who is no longer with Tyrone us. Tyrone, who passed away. Oh, geez, rest. You know, Dwight Gabriel. Dwight Gabriel, Dwight rest in peace. Dwight, yeah. Anyone else? A Black. Trevor, I know you got somebody. A Black, Ooh. Godfather. Yeah. But Trevor, your last name, Daly, there's a lot of them. You guys, a lot of people over there. You got some big family. <laughs> <laughs> it's Daly, all his kids. A lot of Daly's. <laughs> it's, it's all Trevor's children. Daly's. You hear me? Oh, they're all his okay. Don't tell them you're seeing me. I'm a film picnic then. Don't let, don't let them know you'll see me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys, Harvey, well, I heard, well, I heard a little bit, but dailies are all over the place. <laughs> that could be a good thing or a bad thing. Well, you know my, bro my brother, you know, from Third World. Mm. You know the Third World Band? Yes, because you played in Third World. No, my brother does. Oh, your brother does. Yeah, you bass the bass player. Oh, the bass. Okay. Mm. Okay. Richard Daly. And Alvin, We're uh, common name Alvin Jones. Yes. Yeah. And, and I guess uh, you're trying uh, to keep Richard up with the Joneses. You know that, that him and I share the same name. My my middle name is Rupert. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> know that. You know. Rupert so you got the that. curse too. I see. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, who, I, can know, forget, yeah. who can forget us and the chipmunks? That's Alvin! true. <laughs> well, is, that, is that Alvin? <laughs> you, that's not nice. <laughs> that's not, uh, that's not right. Um, Al, Alvin, come well, on. You got to get a comeback said, before you come said, on. I, have to, uh, I had two winners of a name. I had Alvin and I also had Rupert. So, which. Yeah. <laughs> you don't look like a you Rupert. Know? No, no. Rupert looks like per Rupert. OGG. Yes. OGG. Yeah, yeah man. OGG. Like a GG. You got it. <laughs> but anyways, anyway, you know, I do want to thank you. So where thank are the you. social media? Can people um, meet, um, get you at? Where can they find you? Quick, quick, quick. 
Crack of Dawn, 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 Dawn. Dawn Yep, that's right. Crack. All right. Well, you know, everybody out there, support them.